are now starting with the next animal and its structural organization. And the animal is frog. The most common Indian variety that we find is Rana Tigrina. So this is the common frog that we find. The structure I have already drawn. We are going to label certain parts so that we understand the morphology of it. But before we label, we need to talk about certain basic things. That frogs are in phyla amphibia. And why are they placed in amphibia or the reason why they are called amphibians is they can survive on land as well as in water. But the true description of an amphibian is that they are dependent on water for reproduction. So we will write that they are dependent on, sorry, on water for their reproduction. That means <coughs> fertilization takes place in water. So if fertilization doesn't take place in water or if water is not there, their life cycle will not be completed. So in simple language, when we describe amphibians, we say they can live on land as well as in water. But in true sense, amphibian means the one which is dependent on water for its reproduction. So they are in phylum amphibia. Now, when they are on land or when they are in water, they exhibit different types of systems for respiration and all that we will take up when we come to respiration in them. Now, during extreme heat, that is during extreme summer or during extreme cold conditions, we don't see frogs. They are normally found in rainy season. So what exactly or where exactly are these frogs during these two seasons? So in summer season, they go for summer sleep, which is technically known as astivation. This is to avoid the extreme summer and during winters they go for or they go into winter sleep which is known as hibernation. Now why are these animals required to escape from extreme heat or extreme cold? The reason is that they are cold blooded and we call them as poikilotherms. Poikilotherms means they are cold blooded. Cold blooded means their body temperature changes according to surrounding. Body temperature changes according to surrounding temperature. That means if, <coughs> sorry, if the outer temperature becomes very high, the body temperature is going to rise. And if body temperature rises beyond a certain limit, the enzymes would get denatured. And same thing happens if the outer temperature falls too much, if it gets really cold, then the body temperature is also going to fall. And again, below a certain temperature, the enzymatic activities would be reduced and finally stopped. So they escape from extreme heat and extreme cold. They go for astivation or hibernation and they are poikilotherms. Now coming to the structural part. The body of frogs is divided into two parts. This part is known as the head and the later part that means the remaining part is called the trunk. They do not have neck. That means the body is streamlined and the reason for streamlined body is because they have to cut through water so when an animal has to cut through a medium the body should be streamlined so that there is minimum friction or minimum resistance which is exerted on the body so they have streamlined body and for that the neck is absent the eyes are bulging so this structure which we have drawn, these are the bulging eyes. And just behind the eye, there is a circular 
structure which is called the tympanum. This is actually the eardrum. They do not have the external ear, only the tympanum part is there and then there would be the inner ear. At the tip of this snout-like structure, there are nostrils. So, in the head part, we find a pair of bulging eyes. Behind every eye, there is a membranous structure which is tympanum. And at the anterior end, very close to the tip of the snout, we find a pair of nostrils. The body, that is the trunk part, has legs, the forelimbs and the hind limbs. Now, these four limbs have four digits. So, here we have drawn four digits. And in case of males and females, there is a difference here. That means frogs also show sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism. And there are two differences on the basis of which we can distinguish between a male frog and a female frog. In case of male frog, in this region, that is just below the head part where the body starts, in this region we find vocal cords. So vocal cords would be seen only in case of male frogs. So these are vocal cords which are visible only in male frogs. So this is one structure on the basis of which we can distinguish these males and females. The second difference is in the digits of the forelimb. There are four digits. Just beneath the first digit, there is a structure. I'm going to make it slightly bigger so that we are able to see. This is, say, the first digit, the second, third, and the fourth. Beneath the first digit here, there is a copulatory pad. So this copulatory pad is also visible only in case of male frogs. So this is copulatory pad. That means the diagram which we have shown here is of male frog. If we don't show these vocal cords and don't show these copulatory pads, that means it is a female frog. Now, the hind limbs are very powerful. These are the hind limbs and they are muscular and powerful which help the animal to jump and leap. And in the hind limb, there are five digits. As we have said that they can live on land as well as in water. So when they're in water, they would require structures which would help them to swim. And those structures are webs. So between the digits, there are folds of skin and this structure is known as the web. So they have webbed feet. Here also we would find these flaps which would help them swim when they are in water. Now on the posterior side, we find a little hump and a median line is also there. Externally, when we look at the animal, we find that the skin is moist and it is kept moist by mucus glands. So this is because of mucus glands. Posterior most end. At the posterior end, there is an opening which is called cloaca. Cloaca is a common aperture or common opening of three systems. So amphibians or frogs, they have cloaca. Cloaca is a common opening of digestive system, excretory system and reproductive system. And that is, that means all three systems, they are going to open through a common aperture and that aperture is known as cloic. So externally when we see frogs, the skin is moist because of this mucus glands which they have. They are normally greenish in color and they are capable 
of changing the color of their skin and this property is called mimicry or because of this change in color they are able to camouflage or blend in their surrounding. Normally they are found in the green areas during rainy season and that is why their skin is greenish but if they are sitting on the bark of the tree the color would slightly change to brownish so that they are able to blend in that brown environment so that they are able to camouflage so externally four limbs are smaller hind limbs are very bigger very big and very powerful color is greenish or brownish external ears are absent the structure is tympanum that means this is the part from where the middle ear is going to start so internally they would have middle and inner ear so morphology of frog is very simple but internal systems are all very well developed systems so in the next part we will start with the anatomy that means we'll take up all different systems of frog and see how those systems work